Hello everyone, I'm a little under the weather, but far be it from that to stop me from making a football video for you guys. A lot of people just went, ah, damn it. Anyway, a uh, very exciting week two in football. A lot of surprising 0-2 teams and a lot of very surprising 2-0 teams going into week three here. Um, let me just go over some bullet points from week one. Pittsburgh losing massively, massively to Baltimore. Uh, I picked Pittsburgh to win that game, partly it was out of spite that I don't want to cheer for Baltimore for one second this year. Uh, Buffalo! Buffalo's starting out 2-0. Are they the real deal? Uh, probably not, but we'll see. Uh, RG3 out indefinitely uh, for the Redskins. Deshaun Jackson is a probable for this Sunday. Uh, I like to say that this sure does change the dynamics. Hello, Crixus. By the way, Crixus and New Dog are still here, so they're just, you might hear them breathing heavy behind the camera. I swear it's not, you know, a sex slave tied up in a cabinet somewhere. Well, you'd hear that too, but anyway. Um, RG3, if you guys were following on my Twitter on Sunday, I'll put up the tweet here on the screen. Now, I tweeted this out, not knowing what was going to happen. Hello, Crixus. Hello. I put out that tweet because I saw RG3 constantly rolling out, constantly trying to just be Mr. I gotta do every fucking thing like he usually is. The very next play is the play where he rolls out of the pocket to throw that little out pass, lands on his foot and severed his, severed his ankle and whatever, it's like just a sprain or whatever. But I was like, holy shit, I didn't really mean for that to happen. I was kind of just fucking around, but kind of fearful that he was going to hurt himself, not realize he was going to hurt himself the very next play. Um, anyway, just a freaky thing that I wanted to point out. And those of you that were following on Twitter were like, oh my God, he could, Archie predicted that right before it happened. Um, just some freaky shit. Um, the Giants are 0-2. That's no fucking surprise at all. Uh, New England was in Minnesota. New Orleans losing to Cleveland. The Cleveland Brownies with a last second win over New Orleans. New Orleans is 0-2. Who the hell saw this coming? And that game was setting up for the Brownies, and I was watching that game. I was like, oh, God. Here we go. The Brownies are going to lose by one point. The miserable, stinking Cleveland Brownies can just never have a day in the sunlight. And who knew? Hoyer, holy shit, got the job done. Drove him down the field, got into field goal range, and Stunned New Orleans, the team that a lot of people picked to be in the Super Bowl this year, starting off 0-2. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm dying. But anyway, um, good on the Brownies, good on the Brownies. Uh, let's see, uh, what else really happened this week? Um, San Diego beating Seattle. Oh my God, Gates with three touchdowns on that Seattle defense. Yikes. Not so good a team on the road as they are at home, but they're still competitive against anyone on the road, so... That's Seattle. Uh, da, 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 da. Houston, they won again, beat Oakland, eh, whatever. Let's see them play a real team here. Um, Green Bay with a... Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> the Jets are just the Jets. And Marty Morningway calling that timeout. And supposedly, you're not supposed to be able to call a timeout if you're, if you're one of the assistant coaches. Um, actually, no, not supposed, supposedly, that is true. And the refs honored it, but there's no sort of formal replay for once the ref's whistle will play dead for a timeout. Uh, took back the game-tying touchdown, and the Jets, the miserable, bumbling fools that they are, just lost again. But I'll tell you what. I've never been a big fan of Geno Smith, but he is playing, so, it, to, to, to be fair, Geno Smith is playing some good football right now, not so much in the second half of that Green Bay game, but he's earned my respect a little bit. I thought he was going to turn out to be a, a, a Johnny Nobody in this league, but he, he may actually have potential, so um, not all hope is lost in Jetville right now. Um, they just, they've, re they've really got, they've got such problems in that secondary right now. Uh, they, once they get that corrected, they'll be able to make some noise. And Denver beating KC, barely. This Denver team, I don't know about you guys, but this Denver team has not impressed me at all. They come out of the gates, full throttle, hit it halftime, and then die. 
that defense on Denver has let both Kansas City and the Colts in week one just come completely back in games that they had no business coming back in. The Broncos have 10 points in the second half in the first two games right now. For an offense with as many weapons and with Peyton Manning behind the ball, you should not have 10 points in the second half in the first two games of the season combined. There's no excuse for that other than this team is just blowing up and they don't have the endurance to give you a full game. And I'll tell you right now, that team is going to be in serious trouble if they're going to struggle against a team like Kansas City. They're out of running back. They're out like six guys on offense, three guys on defense, all starters. And they struggle to beat them. The defense made one big play <clears throat> at the end of the game where they forced a fumble. Other than that, Man, they let Kansas City come right back in that game and almost steal a victory. So, Bronco land, I would not be too happy with your Broncos right now until they put together a whole game of football. They're like, they're like the opposite of the Eagles right now. The Eagles are <laughs> the best second-half football team right now and the shittiest first half, whereas the Broncos are the exact opposite. Anyway, um, and San Francisco, this game was quite possibly... The worst fourth quarter of play that I've seen a Tim team give quite possibly ever, and I'm not exaggerating that. San Francisco found a way to, it looked like it was just like, ah, Chicago scoring a garbage time touchdown, ah, they're doing shit, ah. Kaepernick with three turnovers, penalties. San Francisco did every possible thing imaginable to Fuck up the end of that game. They couldn't stop Cutler. Cutler, I think at one point, had 12 consecutive passes in a row. Like, what, what the defense just decided to stop playing in the fourth quarter? Holy shit, San Francisco, I would be worried. I would be worried. I know it's just the second game of the year, but to see a quarter of football that was that bad and basically handed Chicago the game, San Francisco just said, hey, I don't care. It's the first home game in our new stadium. Here you go, Chicago. Here's a win. Even though you had a miserable loss against the Buffalo Bills the week before, we're just going to hand you a win here today. Uh, uh, inexcusable. And Philly beating Indianapolis on Monday Night Football. The funny thing is, is of all the 0-2 teams right now, I, I see Indianapolis and I go, they have nothing to worry about. Who, who's going to contend in the AFC South right now? The Texans? Please, don't give me the shit that a team that doesn't even have a good quarterback is going to win the division over a team that is one of the top five quarterbacks in the league on there. Oh, yeah, I said I think Andrew Luck's that good. Um, I just, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't see any reason to worry in Indianapolis, but um, they should be concerned about the play calling, um, especially old Pep in the end of that game. Uh, Philly Sports Talk Radio was going, why was Pep, the offensive coordinator on the Colts, calling, Pep Hamilton calling those Bullshit, just running plays with a few minutes left with... Anyways, I, I, I don't care because my team won, but Indianapolis was poised in a great position to take over and take that game from the Eagles. Terrible play calling on that final drive. Gave the ball right back to Philly. Plenty of time left, and they iced the game with no time left. Oh, by the way, what, what was it that I said in last week's video? Can we, can we go back in time here real quick? Um, I just want to thank the Indianapolis Colts for sticking with their grandfather aged kicker and traded us Parkey and if Parkey wins this game uh, you have no one else to thank but yourselves Colts because you are the ones that gave them to us but let's not get ahead of ourselves um. wouldn't you know that's exactly what happened ah boy I predicted RG3's injury and I predicted the exact end of the Colts Eagles game. My God, I tell you, I just I should have a hotline or something. Anyway, week three, let's get to it. Tampa Bay at Atlanta. Tampa Bay, I had a lot more hopes for you this year, a lot more. Um, it just it didn't look that good against Carolina, and I don't think you're gonna look that good in Atlanta either. Atlanta's gonna pull out the win here. San Diego at Buffalo. Um, Buffalo, time for you to pump your brakes because you're gonna get humbled at home by Philip Rivers. Dallas at St. Louis. St. Louis, I had this game circle as a definite win for you at the beginning of the season and one of the many losses the Dallas Cowboys are going to have, but the Dallas Cowboys are going to come in and they're going to whip your poor ass. I mean, St. Louis, you just look terrible. Uh, Washington at Philadelphia. 
As always, I'll have my prediction for that game a little bit later on this week, this weekend, I should say. Houston at the New York Giants. Um, I don't think the Giants are bad enough to lose three games in a row to start the season, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. And again, I, I, I think Houston, they really need to be humbled as well, and the Giants are going to put together a win at home. Um, look for the Giants to win that game. Minnesota at New Orleans. Well, it's now announced that Adrian Peterson was barred from playing. Now he's going to be playing. And then there was a press conference where the owner or the GM got grilled by press saying, um, uh, is, this, is this just for money to have him play? Did you see the pictures of the kid? By the way, props to the media that was at that press conference and grilled the fucking shit of the brass of the Minnesota Vikings. Saying, did you see the pictures of Adrian's son? How do you find that acceptable? How are you going to let this guy play? Is it just about the money? And seeing him go, uh, da, 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 da. Anyways, Adrian Peterson is now not playing in the game. Look for New Orleans uh, to win and win big at home, safe and sound in their previously Katrina damaged home. Tennessee at Cincinnati. Uh, Tennessee, um, biggest fraud team in the league as far as I'm concerned. To only put up 10 points on a dilapidated, piss poor, more injured prones than last year Dallas defense. Ten fucking points they put up on them at Tennessee. In a fucking excusable, fraud alert, beeping, blinking, sounding off the red alarms. Don't worry, uh, everyone is going to cut through Tennessee. Uh, they, might they might lose to Tennessee, but trust me, no one's going to struggle playing Tennessee this year. Fucking frauds. Cincinnati's going to win at home. They're going to crush the shit out of them. Baltimore at Cleveland. I got the Brownies riding a high wave. I mean, I might regret this pick, but I got the Brownies riding a high wave after that New Orleans game. Look for the Brownies to win at home. Green Bay at Detroit. Green Bay finally woke the fuck up, and it took that second half of football, and even if the Jets did tie that game and win, the, the, the Packers came the fuck back. One of the biggest things, and one of the biggest things that Jets fans should be worried about is that touchdown that they gave up to Green Bay right before halftime. No way could you let that happen. That made that game completely, completely turn the tide. The Packers were beat the fuck down. The Jets had them where they want them, and then they just let them go right in on a final drive right before the half, put up a touchdown, took that game over, and then some. Um, look for Green Bay to win because I think they woke the fuck up now. They're going to win in Detroit. Mark my words. Indianapolis at Jacksonville. Uh, like I said, Indianapolis, don't don't be sweating that 0 2 you have. You gotta play Jacksonville twice. You gotta play Tennessee twice. You gotta play Houston, who doesn't even have a, the Fitzpatrick. Yeah, shut the fuck up. You gotta play Houston, who doesn't even have a quarterback twice. Uh, yeah, Indianapolis is gonna roll over Jacksonville at Jacksonville. In fact, Indianapolis really only has one tough game left, and that's New England. Uh, other than that, it's just going to be cakewalk teams. I wouldn't be surprised if Indianapolis is 8-2 and two after their first 10 games. And I was saying that to people in the comments of my um, review videos this week, or, yes, or two days ago, about the Eagles game. Oakland at New England. Um, not a snowball's chance in elders. Oakland have a chance of winning in New England. New England's going to win that. 4 o'clock games. 49ers at Arizona. Uh, 49ers still licking their wounds. They're going to lose in Arizona. I'm sorry, 49er Nation. I'm sorry. Denver at Seattle. Well, here we go. This is where Denver, uh, uh, the Broncos can win back the faith of their fan base and anyone that's doubting them, like myself. Now, if they put together a complete game and beat Seattle in Seattle, I'll take back everything I said about them. If not, if they look as piss poor in the second half of this game as they had the previous two weeks, I'll just be sitting here and hear you guys say, you told us so. Anyway, or I told you so. Uh, whatever. Uh, but... Uh, Seattle's gonna win at home. Sorry, they're they're not they're not bad enough to lose two games in a row this year. Uh, not quite at all. Kansas City at Miami. Um, Kansas City, just too many injuries to overcome right now. Not to make excuses because everyone has injuries, but Kansas City, especially with Jamal Charles going out after his fourth touch of the game, which I've heard he's rumored to come back. Um, I know someone may correct me on that. Could be changed. Anyway, um, regardless if Jamal Charles is back or not. Um, I look for Miami to win at home. Pittsburgh at Carolina. Look for Carolina. Look at them. The most underestimated team in the league. Everyone had them just not even making the playoffs. They were going to be that one team in the NFC that dominated last year that's not going to show up to play this year. Um, good on them. They're, 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 they're actually doing some good football games right now. So 
Solid game to end the night with on Sunday. Look for Carolina to win at home. And Chicago at the New York timeout, 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 Jets. <sighs> Chicago, why not? Anyway, that concludes our picks this week. Um, I'll have that Eagles video out for you guys later today. Crixus, new dog, thank you for your input. You've been dead the entire video, but they've had a fun day playing with each other the past few days. Don't, don't get dirty with that, guys. Anyway. Have a good day, everyone. Oh, I didn't forget. Fuck the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs>